Hey YouTube, JT Jerborn here, and I want to go ahead and talk about a little fan theory I had about the upcoming Godzilla vs. Kong movie. Now, obviously these two are going to fight in the movie, that's a given. However, I find it hard to believe that these two are going to be the only two kaiju in the movie, and I doubt one of them will kill the other. In my mind, I believe that ultimately these two monsters will set aside their differences and ultimately work together to stop a greater threat. And that greater threat, I believe, will be none other than Desodraya! Now, you might be thinking, okay, that's a cool theory and all, but where are you getting all this and why destroy ya? Well, let me break it down for you. I know I'm not the only one who has thought of this, but I just wanted to throw my two cents in there. As of right now, we know for a fact that the only Toho monsters that Legendary has the rights to are Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidorah. But I believe that they have in fact made a secret deal with Toho to include more monsters in their Monsterverse. And they're not going to say anything because they want to keep it a surprise. So, why is it that I think that Destroya is one of these monsters? Well, here's a couple of reasons. Reason number one. Godzilla King of the Monsters director Mike Doherty posts a picture of the Oxygen Destroyer on his Twitter, and according to Harry Knowles from Ain't It Cool News, it will factor into the plot of the movie. As fans know, the Oxygen Destroyer was used to kill the original Godzilla back in 1954. However, when that weapon was used, it also led to the creation of Destroya, who Godzilla fought in his final appearance in the second series, also known as the Heisei series. As far as the Oxygen Destroyer goes in King of the Monsters, I'm 100% certain it will be Monarch's end-all way of trying to stop the ever-growing threat of kaiju that are re-emerging in the world, since nuclear weapons don't seem to be doing the trick. And in fact, the nuclear weapons attract the kaiju, and they're like, you know what, we gotta find an alternative means to stop these huge-ass monsters. So, with Monarch or whoever ends up using the Oxygen Destroyer unleashing this device, I believe that the world will have to deal with the consequences of unleashing a new and possibly even more powerful threat to the world than the Kaiju themselves. The idea of it all makes me think back to that quote that Dr. Sarazawa said in Godzilla 2014 about man trying to control nature. The arrogance of man is thinking nature is in our control, and not the other way around. This quote from Dr. Sirizawa harkens back to the idea of mankind versus nature, that if we fiddle with things that we're not supposed to, you know, creating the oxygen destroyer, that it could lead to some dire consequences, and I believe that those dire consequences will be realized in the arrival of Destroya. Reason number two, Godzilla vs. Kong director Adam Wingard confirms that there will be other monsters in the film. When discussing Godzilla vs. Kong in an interview we did with Screen Crush, see the link below, Adam Wingard was quoted as saying, It's a massive monster brawl movie. There's lots of monsters going crazy on each other, but at the end of the day, I want there to be an emotional drive to it. I want you to be emotionally invested in them. I think that's what's going to make it really cool. Now, Wingard didn't go on to say which specific monsters were also going to be in the film, but he did say that they will in fact be in there. As far as Godzilla and Kong are concerned, I just don't see them killing off both of these monsters in the final battle. I see the two of them working together to team up and defeat Destroya. In all honesty, Godzilla and Kong working together to stop Destroya would probably be the greatest scene in movie history. Reason number three, Adam Wingard teases Destroya on Twitter. If you follow Adam Wingard on Twitter, then you'll see that he's posted pictures of Destroya. Now, this could just be him reading some Godzilla comics, but I kind of find it hard to believe that he used this specific image of Destroya to insinuate that. Reason number four, Monarch teases other kaiju in the timeline. Let's first start with the Monarch timeline. The official social media pages for Kong Skull Island posted videos about the entire timeline of the MonsterVerse, so you can check them out there. Or if you want to see the events broken down, I posted a link to the website GodzillaMovies.com. They are a terrific site, and I think you should follow them because they keep me up to date on everything Godzilla related. You know, their movies and TV shows or whatever they end up doing with the character. GodzillaMovies.com is one of my sources to go to. So yeah, check them out. Anyways, let's go ahead and break down the uh, timeline of events here. So... Key timeline events. In 1915, there was the splitting of the atom. Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity ultimately leads to the splitting of the atom, which, you know, ultimately acted as a beacon that awakened the super species that were, you know, the kaiju that were sustained by nuclear energy. In uh, 1943, we had the USS Lawton incident. Uh, this one says that Godzilla attacked the Lawton, but we've never officially gotten that confirmation. This is when uh, Bill Randa, you know, John Goodman's character in Kong Skull Island, was a part of the USS Lawton, his ship was attacked and was sank to the bottom of the ocean. He was the only survivor and he saw a creature that did it. Now, most people generally think this is Godzilla, but me, I'm just like, um, it could be, but I don't know for sure. In 1946, Monarch was founded to search for massive unidentified terrestrial organisms. 1952, the Great Smog of London. Baffling meteorologists and defying 
atmospheric physicist, the unexplained phenomenon saw London streets overwhelmed by huge clouds of air polluting smoke. Monarch theorizes that the beating wings of a giant creature could have created an anti-cyclone that unleashed airborne pollutants across the city. Now, this could be potentially Mothra, because as you know, in the original series, Mothra had her uh, spore attack that she used in Mothra vs. Godzilla. Or this could be Hedorah, but Hedorah doesn't have wings. Because, you know, Hedorah was the pollution monster, or also known as the smog monster. So, it could be either one of those two, but I'm going towards Mothra in this one. Or maybe some new mon monster. But this one's kind of up in the air for me. 1959, the Siberian Mystery. Now, this could potentially be Destroya. Or, like... Maybe they test the oxygen destroyer on this creature or something like this, but let's go over it. 1959, Siberian Mystery. At the height of the Cold War, aerial photography taken from a Russian spy plane reveals a huge containment facility established around an ice cap in Siberia. The monarch symbol can be seen embla emblazoned across the canopy of the structure. All right, I'm sorry, I can't read sometimes. But yeah, that one there, Monarch involved right here, as you can tell. This one, I believe, will probably be destroyed. I don't see it as being Rodan. Mothra or King Ghidorah because of what's confirmed later on. 1973, Mission Skull. This is where the, you know, we had the events of Kong Skull Island take place and they discover Kong and so on and so forth. 1991, Ila de Moina. Ila de Mona, um, I think that's how you say it. Well, let's go into it. The Cobra Monarch team establishes a quarantine zone around the island's dormant volcano under the guise of environmental research. Over the coming years, what began as a small scientific outpost will expand to become a full containment facility around the mouth of the volcano. This one right here, I believe, is Rodan. Because as you remember in the original like Godzilla series, Rodan was like coming out of like the ground through the volcanoes and stuff. And then Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, he comes out of the volcano, and the guy's like, ah, the monster, Rodan, ah, you know, stuff like that. 1995, return to Skull Island. This is where, uh, security officer Aaron Brooks defies his father, Houston Brooks, and leads off the book's mission to Skull Island to determine what has become of Kong since the 1973 expedition. Now, this is going on right now in the Skull Island Birth of Kong series. At the time we're recording this video, they're on issue two. But I think by the time I finish editing this video, they'll be done with issue 3 or whatever. So yeah, we'll see what's going on with that one. In 1999, we had the Janjira Meltdown, which, as you know, was the beginning of Godzilla 2014, where the Muto traveled from the Philippines to Janjira to cause the Meltdown, which ruined Joe Brody's life. In 2005, a mysterious mercenary. This one is interesting. It says that a former British Army colonel and MI6 agent Jonah Allen is locked up in a Pakistani prison after an encounter with Monarch agents. Allen and his band of mercenary accomplices were caught trying to breach the walls of a subterranean Muto dig site. Hmm, this one could be interesting. It could be the skull crawlers, it could be the Mutos themselves. We'll keep an eye on this one. I doubt it's Mothra, I doubt it's Rodan, it's definitely not King Ghidorah. And then, um, I don't think it would be destroyed in this case. Um, on to the next one. 2009, Temple of the Moth. Okay, that's Mothra. Don't even have to say anything else. This is Mothra. You can read the rest there. 2012, Message in a Bottle. This is the very beginning of uh, Skull Island Birth of Kong. Days before retirement, Monarch veteran Houston Brooks receives a coded message from his son. The mission to Skull Island has revealed dramatic new information about Kong's origins, which we're going to find out in that series. 2014, the Battle of San Francisco. You know, Godzilla saves the day. We had the kiss of death. Whoa, that was amazing. 2016, Monster Zero. Now, come on. We all know who this is. When Monarch discover an extraordinary superspecies sealed beneath the Antarctic ice, Sheet, Dr. Vivian Graham leads the effort to build a covert containment and research facility around the dormant creature. Her classified field notes contain a mysterious footnote. The devil has three heads. King Ghidorah, bitches. King Ghidorah. Reason number five. King Ghidorah is already in Godzilla, King of the Monsters. As revealed by the official plot synopsis for Godzilla 2, the new story follows the heroic efforts of cryptozoological agency Monarch as its members face off against a battery of god-sized monsters, including the mighty Godzilla, who collides with Mothra Rodan, his ultimate nemesis, the three-headed King Ghidorah. When these ancient superspecies, thought to be mere myths, rise again, they all vie for supremacy, leaving humanity's very existence hanging in the balance. My theory is that Godzilla King of the Monsters will be like a remake of Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, where Godzilla, Mothra, and Rodan all team up to fight King Ghidorah. Now, I'm sure all the monsters will clash with each other at some point, but I believe that in the end, they will all unite against the greater threat in King Ghidorah. At which point, I think it's a strong possibility that King Ghidorah will die in this movie, which means that he most likely won't be appearing in Godzilla vs. Kong as a potential threat that Godzilla and Kong team up against at the end of the movie. 
Also, I highly doubt that they would use King Ghidorah as the threat to unite the monsters twice in a row, so I expect it to be something different via a new and more powerful monster. Conclusion. So gathering up all the evidence, we know that the Oxygen Destroyer will be used in Godzilla King of the Monsters, which I believe will help create Destroya. We know that there will in fact be multiple monsters in Godzilla vs. Kong, the Monarch Tiling has confirmed that there are more monsters out there than we originally thought, Adam Wingard has teased Destroy on Twitter. Now, if King Ghidorah wasn't already confirmed to be in Godzilla 2, then I would say that he would probably be the threat that brings together Godzilla and Kong. But since he's already in Godzilla 2, I expect the filmmakers to go in a different direction in Godzilla vs. Kong. And what better way to do that than Destroy a? I mean, if Godzilla and Kong are considered gods, then Destroya is the devil that will unleash his reign of terror upon the Earth. And the only way to stop him is for Godzilla and Kong to team up in what will probably be the single greatest scene in movie history. It is the peak of cinema, people. Seeing Godzilla and Kong team up, not only after they fight, which is going to be awesome regardless, but seeing these two team up for the first time ever to fight another monster on the big screen, IMAX, 3D, you name it, it's the peak of cinema. It's nothing can top it nothing will ever top that image of seeing these two titans work together to stop something even greater anyways what do you all think of this fan theory do you think there's a chance that destroy shows up in godzilla vs kong to fight both monsters and the two of them have to team up to stop him let me know in the comments below what you think of this theory is it possible is it going to happen i don't know we can just continue to discuss it in greater detail in the comments but anyways, I want to thank you all for watching. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe for more content, and I'll talk to you all later. Peace out.